Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'll be showing you how to use Python and Flask to build a chat app using Socket.io. In this app, we'll have an app that you can access and then send messages to active users that are currently on the app. So the best way to describe it is that it is a global chatting application. Now, before we begin writing the code to create this application, I want to show you a demonstration of how this app is used. So without further ado, let's begin. So this is the demonstration of the app here. And here you can see that there is this input, input form. And if I send a message here, so let's say I say, hey, how are you? It pops up on this other window. Now this is being sent out to every person that's currently active on here, which is why you can see it on this other window. If I send a message from this other window and say, I'm good, how are you? You can see that it pops up on the window that I originally sent the message from. So in the most concise way possible, this is an app that you can basically use to chat with anyone that is active on the application. And now that I've shown you what this uh, demo looks like, we can start building this app. Now, before we build the app, I want to go over how this video is going to go and how it's structured. So I'm going to first make a virtual environment in Python, and then I'm going to show you which dependencies you need to install, and then we can start building the app. So with that being said, let's begin. So here I've opened up Visual Studio Code in this directory called Python Chat App, and what I'm first going to do is create a virtual environment. So to create a virtual environment, we need to do Python 3 hyphen M V E N V in the name of your environment. So I'm just going to name it V E N V. Now I'm running this command since I'm on Mac, but if you're on Windows, it's the same command, except instead of typing Python 3, you'll just do Python hyphen M V E N V and then the name of your environment. But since I'm on Mac, I have to do Python 3. So I'll just hit enter. And if you give it a few seconds, you can see that it pops up on the sidebar right here. And now that we've created our environment, we need to activate it. So to activate it, you're going to need to do source venv bin activate. So source venv forward slash bin forward slash activate. Now this command is for Mac users. So if you're on Windows, I'll have the command on the screen since I don't remember it by heart. So I'll just hit enter. And now that we've created and activated our virtual environment, we just need to install our dependencies. And the dependencies we need to install are Flask and Flask Socket IO. So to install them, you just need to do Python or pip3 install Flask Flask hyphen Socket IO. And if you're on Windows, it's the same command except you have to do pip install Flask and Flask Socket IO. But since I'm on Mac, I have to do pip3. So I'll hit Enter, and you can give it a few seconds, and the dependencies will finish installing. And now that the dependencies have finished installing, I'm going to create the files and folders we need for our application so that we can start to build it. So in Flask, you need a Python file that will contain the code for the app and a templates directory that will return the templates. So I'm just, I'm just going to type in my terminal touch app.py to create a Python file called app.py. And you can see that it shows up right here. And next, I'm going to make a directory called templates and a file called message.html, which is a template inside the directory um, by doing mkdir templates and touch templates forward slash message.html. Now, these commands are only available if you're on um, Mac or Linux. If you're on Windows, there's a separate command for this. but um, if you can't type these commands, then you can just create these from the sidebar over here. But now I'll hit enter, and you can see that the templates directory has been created with the message.html uh, file inside of it. And now that we have our files and folders, we can begin writing code to build this application. So in order to continue with this application, I'm going to first write the code to set up our Python file. And as I'm writing the code, I'll explain to you what it does. And in the end, I'll show you what the app currently looks like. So first, I'm going to do from flask import flask and render template. In order to 
import flask and render template to render this message.html page. And after this, I'm going to um, import socket.io by doing from flask socket.io import socket.io and send in order to import socket.io and uh, broadcast messages across the server. And next, I'm going to do app is equal to flask underscore underscore name underscore underscore to create the app instance. And next, I'm going to write code to create a route for messaging. So in order to show that messaging page that I showed you in the demo, we need a route for it. And to do that, we can just create it by doing at app.route forward slash define message and return render template message.html. So this will basically return this message.html uh, template at the forward slash route, basically whenever you hit the um, application, okay? And now we just need a way to run this app. So to do that, we can just do if underscore underscore name underscore underscore is equal to if or underscore underscore main underscore underscore app.run debug is equal to true. So app.run will basically run the app and debug will true debug is equal to true will let the server know that we are in debug mode right now so that if we have any changes that we need to apply to our app we can make those changes on the spot instead of having to restart the server. And now that we've gotten the app set up, we just need to go into the message.html file to create the input form for sending messages. So in the message.html file, I'm going to type exclamation tab so that it gets me this HTML boilerplate set up. And next, I'm just going to create a div tag and give it a class of messages by doing div class messages to create um, this div container. And next, I'm going to create the input. So to create the input, you just need to go inside of this div tag, of course. And here you can just do input, get a placeholder of message and an ID of message input in order to create the um, input form. And now we just need to save all of our code. So make sure that you have both of these files saved. And we need to run the app to see what it looks like. So my terminal has been cleared and I'll do python3 app.py to run the python app file right here. And once I hit enter, you can see that it shows this right here running on HTTP 127.0.0.1 at port 5000. And if we just go to this link on our browser, you can see that we have set up our web page and we just need to use socket IO to display that the user has been connected and so that we can send and display messages. So now in order to connect with socket IO, I'm going to go into this message.html file and I'm going to paste this script tag um, in the head of my HTML file. And you can find this in the GitHub link that I have in the description, which will contain this import link for socket IO. And now that we have this import link, we can actually work on letting the user know that they're connected and sending uh, messages. So what I'm going to do is first create a script tag inside of my body tag to add some JavaScript. And here I'm going to do const socket is equal to IO in order to connect to socket IO. And next we want to display that your connected message once we've connected to socket IO. And I showed you this in the demo. So to do that, um, we're going to display that message in this messages uh, class with this div tag. So to accomplish that, we have to write let message container is equal to document dot query selector um, dot messages in order to access this messages uh, class right here. And then to display that message, we have to write socket dot on connect. And I'll explain what all this does once I'm done writing the code.
Okay, so what this is going to do is basically tell Socket.io to listen for a connect event, which is when a user loads the page, and then it will create a p tag, which is what this p variable here is for. It's going to create this paragraph element, and the text, of, the text that's in this element is going to be your connected, and we need to display that text by appending the element to the message um, container variable. So, and the message container variable will basically access this messages uh, div class right here. So, make sure that you have all this code saved. And if we go back to our browser, whoops, uh, if we go to our browser, where's it? Right here. Um, if we reload this, um, no, this is not working. Oh, we need to enable um, socket IO in our Python file. So to enable socket IO, we just need to go here. And here what we need to do is create a socket IO variable that will connect us um, to the socket IO, basically. So to do that, we just need to do socket IO is equal to socket IO app and cores allowed origins is equal to all uh, represented by the asterisk here. So if we go here and refresh, you can see that it displays that we are connected. So what we've done so far is basically import socket IO in our HTML right here and did socket on to listen for a connection event. And once we receive that connection event, we basically created a P tag that says you are connected and appended that to the messages uh, container. And in order to do that, Yes, we kind of ran into an error, but that was because I forgot to tell you guys to add this line right here, which will basically connect the server to Socket.io as well. And this will allow it so that our front end can use this IO function to connect to our back end. And here you can see that it displays that we are connected. So I've closed my terminal currently so that it's easier for you guys to see. And now we just need to send messages. So to send messages, we need to listen for an enter key in our message input. So whenever the user types a message, they will have to press enter in order to send that message. So we just need to access the message input in the same way that we accessed the messages class and listen for that enter key. And once they press that enter key, we can emit an event that a message is being sent to the backend and the backend will then broadcast that message to the server as a whole and the backend will emit that message in doing so. And when we receive that event, we just need to display the message. So here in our JavaScript, we just need to do let message input is equal to document dot get element by ID message input to get the input form. And then we need to add an event listener for key presses. So message input dot add event listener key press if e dot which is equal to 13 socket dot emit message message input dot value message input dot value is equal to one. Okay, so what this will do is listen for a key press and if that key press is equal to 13, which is the enter key, we want to emit this message event by passing along what the message is to the backend and once we've done that, we can reset the value of the message input so that it's cleared for us to type another one. So long story short, what we've done is just we've created an event to emit the message along with the value of the message input, which is what the message itself is. So next we need to go into our server and catch this event and the message to send this message to everyone connected. So right here we can do at socket IO dot on message define send message message send message broadcast equal to true. So this code will basically listen for the message event and will take in the message that was sent by the user, which is what the message parameter is doing right here. And it will send that message to everyone connected. So it's basically emitting a message event. So this send function will emit a message event by default. And when using send, it's sending that message to the entire server. And by in order to send it to the entire server, it's doing broadcast is equal to true. So now we just need to go back into our JavaScript and catch this message event and display that message on the screen. So to do that, 
over here we can just do socket dot on message to catch the message Oops. and then take in the message as a parameter and do let message element is equal to document dot create element p message element dot inner text is equal to message and then message container dot append child message element and I'm gonna explain this. So what this code does is it's going to listen for that message event that was emitted by the server by this send function right here. And whenever it catches that message event, it's also going to catch the message that was sent, which is this message right here, which is which is coming from this parameter that we sent um, from the front end. And once it gets that message, we're going to need a way to display that message, and we're displaying that message using a paragraph element. So we're basically creating this variable called message element, which is going to equal to document.create element, and it's creating this paragraph element. And that paragraph element needs to have a value inside of it, it needs to have text inside of it, right? And that text will be the message that the user sent. So we're basically doing message element dot inner text is equal to message, which is the message that we want to send. And once we've done that, we just want to append this paragraph element to this messages uh, class right here so that we can display it onto the web page. So if we save our code and go here and refresh this and open this um, same web page in another tab as well so that we can have multiple connections. And let's say that I send a hi here. You can see that hi is being sent and you can see it on our tab as well as this other tab. And if we send hello, from this other tab, you can see that it's sent here. And if I say, how are you doing? That um, text is sent to the other tab. So now we're basically done with this application. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And I also want to thank you guys for the immense support I've received on this channel. And I wanted to apologize for the lack of uploads. I've been on summer vacation with family all summer and school starting soon, so I haven't gotten the time to upload. But other than that, I hope that this video was of help to you, and I hope you enjoyed. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next video.